Welcome back to another interesting product review video. And uh, this is the Air Gradient 1 Indoor Air Quality Monitor. And these two boxes are sent to me by the Air Gradient in exchange for the review, but I'm not paid anything about this. They are just looking for some 3D printing YouTuber who can test these products because uh, according to them, 3D printers emit uh, VOCs during the printing. And their monitors are designed to track these pollutions, giving us real-time data on the air quality. In the meantime, this video, I like the whole channel got its own sponsor, and that's the Polymaker, who is supporting all my research work, including this one. Now back to the air gradient. Just from their specifications, key benefits for air monitors is open source and transparent. We have the full control and ownership over our data. Community driven, this means they are collecting the feedback from their users and they are constantly improving the product. Repairable and sustainable, designed for the long term use and with easily repressible parts. Also, I'm hoping to measure the effect of this upper twinned air filter, which I bought myself from IKEA, very popular air filter. And uh, I have two boxes, which will make my testing much easier, because uh, I'm not sure how this operates, but uh, with two units, uh, my experimental plan is much easier. Because, for example, I will start testing here in our living room, where we usually don't have CD printers. And then I will go into my office, which is quite small, and I have a lot of printers there. And uh, usually my bamboo or kiddie printers are connected to the pipe and the uh, exhaust fan blows out the air. But I try to use the other ones, which are opened, and we will see if there will be some changes recorded in air quality. Let's see what's in the box. This was content of the box. This is not the user manual. So we have the main unit, the cable, which is USB Type-C, but there is no power adapter. And we have these legs or stands. Mm -hmm. On the back side here we can plug the power cable, but there is no information how many amps it requires. Probably something like phone charger is enough here. And we have some QR codes adding to Wi-Fi and uh, add to dashboard. And inside this hole is a button. For example, we have to press it if you want to go into offline mode. On the top and on the bottom, we have some openings, properly for the air circulation. I believe that there is some kind of fan inside. And this is the second unit with exactly the same content of the box. With this unit, I can measure the power consumption. The biggest peak I can notice is 0.2 amperes, so I don't really understand why it requires 2 ampere charger. I can see a countdown on the screen, time to connect to the Wi-Fi internet. Following the QR code on the back side, it creates some kind of access point and I can connect to it with my smartphone. And after this, I can give the information about my home network and now the second unit is connecting. And our both units are connected to my home network. Even on the screen we can see quite a lot of information. The temperature, relative humidity, CO2, PM2.5, VOC and NOx. And more about these meanings later. Let's analyze two displays. Uh, some numbers are equal, for example, temperature and relative humidity, so it looks like this is accurate. CO2 here, I can see some differences, 665 and 620 on the other one. PM2.5 is 3 and uh, 2, and VOC 108, 103, and NOx 1, 1. And now following the second QR code, adding to the dashboard. To make some difference between units, this is 1 and this is 2. And both units are added to the dashboard. I named them Uno and Duo. And this is the dashboard from my computer. On first panel, we can see the pollution information, the meanings, PM2.5. These are small particles below 2.5 micrometers. CO2 carbon dioxide. For example, if we have a lot of kids in the room playing, do we have to open the window? VOC, volatile organic compounds. Uh, if you want, you can pause the video to read the meanings. And this is the nitrogen oxide. So I can see the data from my two units, I named them Duo and Uno. And this is a summary chart table. And if I click on any of these numbers, I can see the historical data. Let's see the temperature changes. Let me explain my first experiment. I have here two carbon fiber filaments. This is a Prusament PC blend. And this is a PS6CF by Polymaker. And I will place them in this filament dryer. 
So this filament dryer works as a fluid dehydrator. It sucks the air from the bottom, heats up this air, and it will go around the spool and the uh, output is here on the top. And here I will place one air gradient sensor and the other will be as far as possible. And I want to see if there be any difference between them. So even now after 15 minutes, I'm exactly in the middle of these two units. I can see some difference in carbon dioxide too, but uh, here you can see the picture side by side. And now let's switch the location of these two units. Only after three minutes I can see that the number are switched. On PM2.5 this one says zero and the other says two. But the VOC here I can read 385 and on the other unit 185. And why is this PM2.5 smaller on unit which is located here? Hmm? But what happens if I take out these two spools? Even after half hours the VOC is quite high, so it is not the filament. Looks like the carbon dioxide sensor works good. We were playing with the Xbox with my youngest daughter and uh, now on both units here I have four LED lights and there are five LED lights. So it is time to open the window. Only after 10 minutes but several doors and uh, windows are opened. Look at this. Only one LED and here too. So I think this is so far my favorite function of these units. I also noticed that the VOC value is uh, now very low, only 4, but PN2.5 is quite high now, 18 in this case, and on the other unit it is 3 and uh, 20. Let's analyze this on the dashboard. So here we started with our jumping and uh, this is when we finished, quite high CO2. And then we opened the window and then the value fell down. But what is interesting that uh, what happens with other units, PM2.5, actually after opening the window it increased to 22, so I'm confused here a little bit. VOC, and uh, here we opened the window so it was decreased, so this act normally as I expected. And currently I'm on my workplace, I bring the air monitors here. This is quite small office and uh, I cannot really connect them to the internet so they will work in uh, offline mode. By the way that uh, offline mode is quite tricky, you have to press this uh, switch on the back side. But you have maybe two or three seconds for this. And I hope you can see the current state, so we will see 163 here and 126 here, so approximately let's say 150 is some kind of average. And I will start the printing now and I will see what will be the state in two or three hours. This is now the third layer and I have to go out from my office for a time. I'm printing a lot of these. These are those uh, replacement coins for the shopping cart and I'm printing this for our marketing department. This is the logo of our university. I was back to my office five minutes ago and let's check the numbers. On this one which is closer to the printer we have smaller values, 207 the VOC and here 244. Uh, of course a little bit bigger than before the printing but I'm not sure what this amount of the difference means. Now after one and a half hours later I can see the carbon dioxide went up because I didn't open the window. Because I was curious about this, the VOC went down 169 and 183 because now the printer is shut down. I will reprint the same objects because I'm curious if this VOC will went up again. Print. Still no open window, this is the second group today. And uh, I'm constantly here and no significant change in this uh, VOC. Yes, I can see that uh, carbon dioxide went up because, as I mentioned, I'm here and I didn't open the window. But uh, this time the VOC didn't went up, so I'm a little bit confused. I couldn't see clear correlation with, between the printing and the VOC numbers. So, as I mentioned, uh, this is quite small office and I can feel that smell of the plastic and under normal circumstances I would open the window, but of course I have the test in the progress and I'm curious if I can see some correlation between the printing and the VOC numbers. That's it for today and as you can see the carbon dioxide went up too much. And the VOC is 203, 233. But it's time to open the window. Pity I didn't show the time on the camera too because only in two minutes from red this became green. 
Let me show you one more thing. So the air monitors are here and my wife was cooking. These are cooking times, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And as you can see, the cooking produced more VOCs than 3D printing. I don't really have significant difference in VOCs uh, next to the printing or without printing, so I'm not expecting much from this air filter, at least uh, nothing which I can measure, but let's test it. Oh, I thought it runs on USB. The output is 24 volts, 0 0.8 amperes. So this is my new setup for today. Uh, one air monitor I place very close to the printer and the other is here. And I started a new printing and after one hour I will check the numbers on the VOC value. And then I will turn on this air filter and I will see if it will be changed. It will print half more hours, so let's see the numbers. 131 and on this one 121. <laughs> here it's a lower, but now let's enable this to the maximum. The moving of the air is quite strong on the maximal position, I can see that on the piece of paper. It's working on that maximum, but even after half hours I cannot see any changes. VOC even went up a little bit here, it's even bigger, 146 and here 134. Sorry it's time to finish the video because I'm afraid that it will be too boring. Now some conclusions. I'm using these air monitors several months now and I use them even in this uh, working room which is full of printers. And um, let's do some conclusions now. First about the temperature and relative humidity. Very useful information, especially for those who is storing their PLA filaments on the open air. And if you see that uh, for some reason it's a rainy day and vents up too much that relative humidity, maybe it's time to protect that filament a little bit better. And it's very accurate in this case. About carbon dioxide. This is my favorite function of these air monitors because they reminds me that it is time to open the window, which very often I forgot. And now about these VOCs. I couldn't see clearly measurable information between CD printing and these VOCs. I'm not telling that there are no VOCs, but I just couldn't measure them with this unit. Of course, in most cases, I can see that this VOC increased but that number was different from time to time and sometimes I couldn't see any difference before and after or during the printing. And sometimes I, when I used two units, the one which was closer to the printer showed a smaller value compared to one which was on a bigger distance. And also my wife's cooking produced more VOCs than my CD printing. So I think this VOC increase when we have some air moving because those particles goes to the sensor more often and in this case we can see some increased number. So unfortunately, as I mentioned, I couldn't see clear correlation between CD printing and measurable VOCs with this air monitor. So uh, shortly this was my experience with this uh, very interesting unit. And if you have some other experience, then please write me down a few comments in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe printing.